Okay, so I wanted to do a quick video on this very popular chronometer. You see them in thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of uh, Cessnas. This is the AstroTech LC2 digital chronometer. And in all the Cessnas I've ever flown, probably 99% of them, they don't work. <laughs> They're not functioning. So the reason why is that these things are actually not powered by the airplane. That's why it's on right now. But the master is not on. This thing gets battery power from a AA battery. And um, those bat it's the battery that dies and nobody ever replaces it. So if you have one of these in an airplane that you're flying a lot or in an airplane that you own, all you got it and it's not working, 99% of it will be fixed by removing these four screws. You push the thing, the instrument, back in, drop it through the back of the panel, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. Some newer panels, actually, you can move the whole panel forward, so you don't have to do that. But you uh, just remove one screw out of the back, and it's a single battery in there. You take that battery out, you put a new battery in, and Bob's your uncle. There's really nothing to it. Once you're in there, too, you can set whether you want this to be 24-hour, like it is right now, because you can see it's 0645. That's the time. Uh, or 12 hour. That can only be done internally once you have the whole thing apart. So just going to show you some basic operation right now. Um, you can basically use it as a clock or a timer. It also has a date function as well. So if you push the mode button here, you see it flips over to timer and you can tell it's timer because you see the annunciator right there over the timer. So it's in timer mode. And then it's very simple to start the timer you push the, the DT activation button, you see it running up. To stop it, you push it again. And you gotta push the buttons kinda hard, they're not overly delicate buttons. If you wanna continue the countdown or restart the countdown, you push it again, restarts. If you want to reset the timer to zero, you push the reset button. And that's as easy as it is to set the timer. You flip the mode back over to clock mode, and this one's in 24-hour mode, but it's way off. The actual time, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the Zulu time. It's 4.08 Zulu time, which is 16.08 in 24-hour um, in time. So what I'm going to do to reset the timer is you push and hold, or reset the clock, and actually you can set the date as well. It has a date function as well. You push the set button. And you see the first number that's flashing there, that is the date, that's the month. So let's bring it up to, we are in month number four. So I'll just go all the way around the horn here so you can see it. Month number four, and we'll change the date now by pushing the set button again. And we are on the 20th. So just push it until you hit the 20th. Okay, and then you push it again. And now that your calendar is set, you see how the lights have stopped bl uh, are steady blinking, but the numbers are not blinking? That's your month and date. Now you want to set your, uh, your time. You just push set again, and now you're in the time mode. So we're in 24-hour clock. So we want to run this up to, what did I say the time was? 16, 10. So we've got the 16 set. Hit set again. It'll move over to the minutes. And we just advance this over to 10. and your new Zulu time is set. So if you have one of these, you might as well make it work. If you're gonna make it work, you might as well make it work right. Have it in time mode if you're flying IFR and you need an extra timer. Well, you got a thousand dollar timer sitting right there in your, in your uh, instrument panel. That's how much that thing costs. It, there's nothing to it. There's like one little chip in the back and then the battery, and it does have uh, a wire to give it light. It does get light from the airplane, so it's backlit nicely by the airplane, but, uh, but it's just operated by a battery. So uh, get the battery in there, 99% of the time it will work, and then you got a $1,000 $1, timer in there. It's always good to have a backup because, um, you just never know when you're going to need one. Now, I'm going to show you, if you think I'm, I'm kidding you about, uh, about it being $1,000 here. If you think I'm kidding you about it being $1,000 here, just look at it here. Aircraft Spruce, Astrotech LC2 clock. Hopefully you can read that okay. And this is probably in Canadian dollars. 939 big ones. Can you believe that? 
there's absolutely nothing to this thing. It's like 25 cents worth of hardware, but slap aviation on it, and there's a thousand dollar clock for you that never works. So anyway, now you know how to make it work. If, uh, if you so have one in your Cessna, or in your Piper Cherokee, in your Piper, whatever, whatever airplane you have, if you got one of these timers, they're handy. They're good to have as a, as a backup. And once you put the new battery in it, new battery will last at least a couple, I'd say between two and five years. Buy a high-end battery, just make sure there's no corrosion on the leads there. And make sure when you pull out the old battery that you notice the polarity, because they don't mark the polarity on the back of this or inside the unit. Uh, you can tell that the black wire is coming up to the negative side and the red wire comes up to the positive side. So if you ever uh, do that and you lose place, that's how you know. All right, so thanks for joining me. Thanks for flying with Frank. Mm -hmm.